ladies and gentlemen looks that the energy of the indian youth is out to meet the 100 100 megawatt gigawatt target you see i am a basically hydrocarbon man but uh, oil industry in india had been always trying to harmonize the conventional energy source utilization and renewable energy resource utilization my first encounter was to do something in the area of hydrogen and uh, later on i was involved with problems of carbon dioxide sequestration and uh, where i got some idea of biomass and then at the university of petroleum and energy studies i did frame projects and monitor projects on biomass gasification so i have this much in the renewable energy sources the the our team our title of the section the session is very interesting sustainable smart and our energy technologies now what is smart to me smart look something which involves an intelligent fast decision based on information and converting that decision into implementation taking it to implementation where least effort and least energy is utilized it is both time and cost effective operation doing of doing things with an intelligent be, intelligence behind so that you do no do, do do no wrong zero defect policy practically all our experts here in the panel showed lot of smart decision making techniques in buying and erecting and controlling and total energy ma management of the country almost so the the entire research goes to generate an invention based on a some good concept which fills the gaps of knowledge at a given point of time when invention is converted into some useful thing for useful purposes it becomes an invention and when invention creates social and economic impact it becomes a technology so for a smart solution we do require research to generate some invention we do require innovation and we do require research and development and therefore this session is really of great importance the entire research and development is basically to dominantly focus in the area of cost and efficiency improvement now i'll briefly mention some of the thrust areas for research and development which i see in various sectors of renewable energy sources well in the solar energy we have to be doing working for more efficient solar cells people have talked about it and uh, multi junction or multi layered or maybe different dyes which which have a low quantum yield very high quantum yield maybe new kinds of photo cells would come which would be really more efficient and that will reduce cost of erection probably cost of production maybe reduce space required for erection another point to make it sustainable the present level of uh, photo cells pv cells use trace elements like gallium germanium now these trace elements are in short supply in the world china is the major supplier today and the whole world depends on them practically so we have to do research to substitute for these cost effective trace elements with some younger one which could be sensitized or improved upon by some technology like cluster uh, chemistry of 
making different kinds of metals with more electrons available to them, or by making an, a, a dye or something. We have to work on substituting costly trace elements to much cheaper cost elements. There is a, some success has already been made in this area by using copper, which is activized, doped with some other metal. The The use of solar energy for hydrogen generation looks to be very attractive, but maybe it requires certain more research to make it cost effective. There are problems of over voltages, there are problems of uh, uh, metallurgy in the entire of the system, and the whole thing may be patented, but it will require further improvement and further cost reduction. We will require in the storage field probably better methods. It, ap it appears that some high, well, high quality capacitors which can take immediately large charge and can be made to discharge slowly are possible. Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, has already developed a prototype which is a magnesium metal based uh, uh, capacitor and maybe someday we have a much better capacitor in place of battery. Batteries, people have already talked about its sustainability, its disposal, its maintenance, all those points have been there. Maybe we have some capacitors which are dry and can be utilized. And in solar energy, as my young colleagues have already shown, we do require, when we optimize grids, do require very robust software systems, which are open access kind, which can be applied to any kind of grid systems and can be applied to any kind of computers and others, which, uh, which should come into market. So quickly use those systems for managing stable supply and optimizing grid grids. Something is being done, but more requires required to be done. In the area of uh, biomass, I would say the bioenergy aspect is very important. In bioenergy, we do not use external energy to convert one material to another material. We only use the natural resources, trace elements, waters, and, uh, and air. For example, converting carbon dioxide directly into methane using a bacteria, modified, genetically modified bacteria. It is possible that I can convert carbon dioxide into a useful energy resource. Similarly, I can convert algal bac fungal biomass through bacteria into hydrogen, can produce hydrogen. So I, I'm not using external energy into the system. I'm using nature's energy available. Uh, professor has told carbon is important, I can extract. But carbon and hydrogen both are so bound that you have to put external energy to take them out. I make methanol, but making methanol from biomass requires energy, which I can take from solar or which I can put from outside, from some place. But they are not highly energy efficient systems. And using... Uh, Biomass, methanol, or ethanol requires a lot of legal problems. Uh, okay. All right, all right. Legal problems. Methanol cannot be used unless there is a law to use it. Though it is very useful, there is a Nobel laureate who has supported methanol, Dr. Ola, uh, the, <laughs> the methane, methanol economy, and di di dimethyl. In wind energy, uh, some experiments have been done, but what we foresee that wind can be made round the clock. During the day, air compressed is made from the solar heat. And that compressed air then can be released in such a way that the turbine can continue to work. So that is possible. Some demonst laboratory demonstrations have been made, but maybe within the next four or five years, we have solar wind also run by compressed air, 
which has been compressed due, using solar heat during the day, and we have round the clock wind power generation. This is an area wh where we should be working. People have been thinking of biomass algae as a major resource, but <laughs> it is very difficult to ever, it will never become ever commercial and not compete with other methods. But uh, the research goes on, someday something, some breakthrough will come because the production and harvesting is a, and without alteration of the uh, algae, algal species or mutation is not an easy task. It is a very, very difficult task and it will take long time. And people have talked very little of wave energy and kinetic energy of the flowing water. And this, this is also the future. The Americans have already developed a patented marketable buoy which can generate 1.5 kilowatt of power from the wave energy of the sea. It can be made to float anywhere in the sea. And one can use, so maybe in future, we have more of uh, wave and flowing water kinetic energy solution to energy. It's probably God is kind. Somebody said if God is kind, data will flow. God is always kind. The energy will continue to flow. It will depend on what cost you.